Okay, political science for S6. In the previous class, we talked about um, federalism, so the federal form of government. In uh, today's recording, we are turning to unitary systems. Okay, uh, here um, I, ha I, I found this picture here. It's uh, on a Wikipedia page. It's still useful, so, as you can see. Uh, this is uh, a kind of map and you see that those countries in blue although we cannot really zoom in those countries in blue all have a unitary system of government while those in green ha are federal states okay but like i said we're going to focus on unitary systems um a good number of states today they you know they they place power in a single national institution so that can be a central government in the case of the uk for instance that's uh westminster okay that's the parliament in london now such a body would have supreme and unrivaled legislative authority outranking all others outranking all other uh, branches or units of government and the power is you can say to a certain extent unchecked by a codified constitution and then uh, other government units especially the peripheral ones they exist at the pleasure of the center meaning that if the center wanted them gone you know at least in principle it would be possible to abolish them okay so you have one central national authority and it has it holds uh, all political power and then it can create or abolish you know peripheral governments you know and uh, and uh this central or national government doesn't share sovereignty with the smaller, more, in a way, marginal, uh, peripheral government units. Um, but then uh, we also want to talk about those peripheral bodies, those, those that are, you know, farther away from the center. So... There are two types that, that exist in unitary systems. So you have local government and then you have devolved assemblies. Okay. So we're going to discuss these things in, in some detail. So when you talk about lo uh, local government, so that can be government in a village, a district, a town, municipality, city, a county, a department, a region. Okay. <clears throat> like I said before, they don't share in sov sovereignty. So they are really subordinate to the central authority. Okay? In most cases, what they do is simply the implementation of, of the central authority's uh, policies. Okay? And local governments, of course, are found in both systems, in the federal and the unitary systems. For instance, you would have regions, departments, and communes in France. These are different levels, different types of peripheral government and regional government or, you know, local government. And you would have, just as an example, counties in the UK and the US. Now, why are they important? Because in many cases, they're the only form of government that's really that exists outside the centers outside the capital for instance and you know <clears throat> the size of these things um it's not it's not uh what you call this can cannot be ignored so for instance you know in the u.s you have eighty six thousand lgus local government units and <clears throat> these local government bodies they employ you know 11 million people so you, you can understand that you know although 
local governments don't don't share sovereignty although they in many instances they they exist in order to you know we serve if you could put it that way serve the interests of you know the the government that is in power they're not negligible we're talking about you know uh, massive uh, numbers of people of course like i like i said uh, this is uh, the idea that we we've been leading up to local government is um they're not irrelevant even though they don't have the kind of they don't have sovereignty the way you know a central authority does why because local governments are ubiquitous ubiquitous they're everywhere okay they're closer to the public you could say they're you know they're closer to the ground to, to what's actually happening and um a lot of these local governments they are manned by elected officials locally elected officials and so because they're elected they're chosen by the people by by the locals in a particular area these uh, officials have they 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 have a, a certain degree of legitimacy of democratic legit legitimacy because they were chosen because they were elected into office so you cannot say that the relationship between the national government you know or a, a parliament in in a, a country's capital and a peripheral body that that's a matter of mere dictation that okay this is what you need to do. The central authority tells the peripheral body, you know, no ifs or buts. You just have to do it. No, it's not like that. It's in many cases, it's a matter of negotiation. You see, the balance of of uh, between the center and the periphery can be influenced by many many factors. So, for instance, political culture in you know if you're talking about areas or regions that have enjoyed a lot of autonomy they wouldn't like it so much if you know um, a central government would just dictate terms and and their policies or would just use them as you know service providers so you know you have traditions of autonomy you have regional diversity and other factors that come into play uh, also um what's important here is the nature of the party system so it you know you can imagine that if the central government for instance uh wants to influence what's happening on the ground then just suppose that the local government is really run by people who are not elected which can happen which is the case in some countries and um to a certain extent this is the case in france um, you know, if a local government official is appointed, then you can politicize, you know, a uh, local government. The local government can be, uh, you know, can lean towards uh, one particular party ideology or a party line. So you would have a, a local government that would be more obedient to central authority but you know you can imagine that if the local officials were elected then that might not necessarily be the case so you can imagine that a local government would be able to exercise greater autonomy from you know the the parliament in the capital or you know the national government so just a couple of examples um you know the counties they they grew out of parishes you know in in many democracies in many liberal democracies today you would have local government units these were you know historically speaking these were really formed out of local parishes so there would be a degree of they would enjoy these uh local governments would enjoy a degree of autonomy because if if you're talking about the time of kings for instance although you had a central power you know uh 
in many instances, the power of the king did not really reach, you know, so at least not in a totalitarian fashion, reach people uh, in, in, in certain places. So people who are far away from, you know, for instance, the capital. So there, there has always been respect for local government in the UK, for instance. But then you have uh, conservative governments in the 80s and the 90s. And what was the, you know, given their political ideology, given their economic policy and local government units, lost the ability to set taxes and, you know, spending policies. Now, um, what these governments wanted was for local government to merely supervise the services provided by private bodies. So instead of, instead of the local government making decisions and then acting on its own with a degree of autonomy, they became, you know, bodies that simply implemented or uh, facilitated, okay, sorry, facilitated, you know, the, the services, the delivery of services provided by private companies, for instance, or private bodies. But then, you know, there has been a move in, in more recent, um, in, uh, in more recent history, there has been a move towards decentralization. So for instance, in the UK, they re-established uh, the Greater London Authority. So you have you actually have this in London and then you have an elected mayor. The idea was for this official to have, you know, something comparable to the powers of American mayors, but, you know, maybe unfortunately that's not yet the case. And there has been a, a push for the election of mayors in more areas. So if you have mayors, then you have a, you know, a stronger executive figure in, in a locality. And then, you know, you would have, at least for a local government, a local government would have greater autonomy. Okay. And in France, there's, there has also been a move towards decentralization. So before, for instance, you know, a department that's a, you know, kind of unit of a political unit in France, a department would have prefects. That would be the head of the department, but the, a prefect was uh, somebody who was appointed by the central government. So a kind of representative and somebody who would, of course, carry out the wishes of the central government. But, but you know, over the course of uh, decades, there has been a move towards more decentralization. So for instance, departments are now run by a general council and that general council is responsible for, you know, many of these things, uh, services, okay? For instance, like a welfare, health, um, employment. So the things that used to belong to the central government now, they have been uh, turned over to the, the general council and the general council has is elected and it, it has um, a precedent. So you can imagine that there's more, it has become more representative, it has become more democratic and power has been distributed from, you know, um, the national government to a more peripheral body. Okay, so I'll stop here and in the next recording, we are going to talk about devolved assemblies. See you there.